I worked for three different companies yeah. in Big Pharma for 13 and a half years. Originally, I'm, I'm from the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD at Oxford and moved to the uh, US in 1992. And what we've been seeing in Big Pharma in the last four or five years are a, a tremendous number of layoffs, downsizing, mergers, and so on. And industries realizing that they really need to look for, for new avenues of innovation. And one of those avenues is to actually partner with academic institutions like the University of Arizona, for example. But when I was in industry, I was actually working on a, on a bone growth project, okay, for the treatment of uh, osteoarthritis. And during that project, we, we actually, uh, somewhat serendipitously, came across a new piece of chemistry. We looked at that chemistry, figured out what was going on with the chemistry, and realized that we'd opened, opened up a, a whole new field of chemical uh, transformations, if you will, that enabled okay, the construction of complex drug-like molecules in a very, very short time span with a mere one to two simple synthetic operations. So instead, for, instead of it taking uh, six weeks to make a potential drug-like molecule, we could make these molecules in one to two steps. Okay. In fact, these molecules can actually be made by undergraduate students with very limited training. Okay. And what this provides you is an excellent starting point to progress molecules along what we call the so-called value chain, okay. to improve uh, molecules' uh, molecular properties that will enable the molecules that you are making Okay, to reach the site of action of the particular micromolecule that you are targeting to disrupt disease progression. And you can do this very, very quickly and very, very effectively. There has already been impact on the bench to bedside process with some of the chemistry that we've already developed. They were able to progress two molecules all the way to phase two clinical trials. One for the treatment of HIV infection, the other for the treatment of preterm labor and those are currently in phase two uh, clinical trials. So the chemistry is really being adopted in many, many circles, many, many industrial circles and many, many academic circles. The molecule shown here was made in one step, okay, and it was targeting okay, what is known as the melanin concentrating uh, receptor implicated in obesity. For a normal uh, translational campaign, you would probably have a group of five to ten chemists, okay? And to get to this stage uh, could take at least one to two or, or even five, five years. This was done by one chemist in two months. We're developing a chemistry platform, okay, where translational campaigns can be conducted with uh, employees, if you will, that can be high school students, okay, you know, these can be high school student summer projects and performed very, very quickly. When you look at the portfolio of biological developments that the University of Arizona has, biological targets that have been developed and are waiting to be translated into a, an end product, I view them very much as being golden eggs just lying around on the floor waiting to be picked up, waiting to be pushed along the value chain where you improve the properties, the potency and ultimately shape the molecules so that they will be able to be taken orally, okay, be absorbed through the small intestine get into systemic circulation, okay, and then reach the site in the body where, where the actual disease of interest is uh, developing. What we're actually doing is building what we're calling the uh, Arizona Compound Collection, which we're hoping will be somewhere in the region of 150,000 compounds uh, in the next uh, 18 months. So the Arizona Compound Collection will be pivotal for a huge number of in-state collaborations more, and really could potentially galvanize okay, the whole uh, health sciences arena uh, within the state of Arizona.